In this video, we tell you the untold stories of the Italian actress Claudia Cardinal, while showing you some of her rare photos. She was a victim of a dysfunctional background, but yet she managed to rise as one of the top industry talents. But then she fell prey to hungry directors who did all they could to tear down all she had built. But what really happened between Claudia and director Franco Cristaldi that caused such a fiasco? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. Growing up, Claudia had no plans to dominate the screens. She just wanted to live a simple life as a local teacher. Everything was going according to plan until she won a beauty contest that she hadn't even registered for, and that was going to change her life forever. Her parents didn't understand it when it happened. None of them had affiliations with the entertainment industry, and their daughter was going to be taken away so she would become an actress. But Claudia was not exactly an obedient child, so they had little to say on the matter. As a teenager, Claudia was described as silent, weird, and wild. Many people believe that the beauty contest was the turning point for her, but that's not fully correct. The truth is that it had started for the actress long before that, and the pageant just announced it. Claudia was discovered after her first film work with her classmates under French film director René Vautier. Their film was widely received after it was presented at the Berlin Film Festival. That was where Claudia would get her first invitation into the acting industry, but she would refuse. French director Jacques Baratier was not ready to take no for an answer. He persisted and with time, Claudia was forced to indulge him. He offered her a minor role in his film Goha, and that officially became her feature film debut. Being a local celebrity was great, but something much bigger was coming. In 1957, at the Italian Cinema Week, Claudia was crowned the most beautiful Italian girl in Tunisia. As part of her compensation packages, she won a free trip to the Venice Film Festival, and that was where the magic happened. Claudia met different film producers who tried to talk her into featuring in their latest productions. She was even invited to study at the Experimental Cinematography Center in Rome under the famed Italian actress Tina Latensi. Everybody adored everything about the latest actress except for her voice. Producers always considered her voice too hoarse, and her thick French accent made it difficult for her to speak Italian. Out of frustration, she abandoned all she had in Rome and traveled to Tunisia to pick up her career as a teacher. But it was too late. Life had her at a place where she couldn't say no even if she wanted to. In 1958, Cardinal signed her first official acting contract, and that was when her breakthrough came. It's quite interesting that the actress got her first significant success in a film where she played a minor role. Big Deal on Madonna Street was going to expose her to a new level of fame. In the film, she played Carmelita, a Sicilian girl who was overpowered by her brother and forced to live with him. The movie was a box office hit, and suddenly, Cardinal became the audience favorite. They even nicknamed her La Fadenzada d'Italia, which means Italy's sweetheart. Claudia continued her success streak with features in a string of other successful movies, including Three Strangers in Rome, Vento del Sud, and Upstairs and Downstairs. For Cardinal, the real challenge was in the 1959 mystery film Facts of Murder. According to her, the film trained her to master the craft of acting while learning how to sit at ease in front of a camera. The next phase of Claudia's career would be the easiest she would ever experience, but deep down she knew it all along. One is never happy for too long in the acting industry. Cardinal fell in love with the dark side of acting, so she readily accepted manipulative roles where she led men into perdition. These could be seen in films such as Girl with the Suitcase, A Man in Love, Rocco and His Brothers, and Bebo's Girl. Did these roles reflect her true personality, or was she in them for the fun of it? Only she can tell. But the later years of Claudia's career would prove that she is no saint. There were traces of all that she is portrayed to be. Anyway, Claudia's most successful acting year would be 1963, when she was featured in two of the greatest films ever made. Cardinal was cast in Visconti's film The Leopard and Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. These movies catapulted her to superstardom and at some point, she was regarded as the most successful Italian actress. The years that followed continued Claudia's success story, but what you might find shocking is that after over six decades of high-quality performance behind the camera, Claudia doesn't think she deserves all the success to her name. 
I've been very lucky because I've had many fantastic directors. Fellini, Visconti, Blake Edwards, and lots and lots. 78-year-old Claudia Cardinal confessed. For her most successful year in the industry, Claudia was mentored by some of Italy's finest filmmakers. In an interview, the actress revealed some of the hidden details of her mysterious relationship with directors Visconti and Fellini. As she confessed, the directors were opposite of each other, and this made life very difficult for her as she struggled with them. Federico's Eight and a Half and Visconti's The Leopard were produced at almost the same time, and this had Claudia frequently moving from one to the other. Claudia was forced to learn Visconti's strictly planned approach, which conflicted with Fellini's relaxed style and his systems of improvisation. According to Claudia, Visconti organized his set with a focus on the film, and he needed a lot of silence to work, unlike Fellini who worked with a lot of noise and confusion. Cardinal has always been shy about picking a favorite, and even though they both had a significant impact on her career, we always suspected that Claudia had always had a soft spot for Fellini. Nobody knew why until she exposed Visconti, and although he believed in her, he was never brave enough to go all in. Claudia broke into Italian television and dominated the show. Directors loved everything about her except for her voice. Claudia had a husky voice, and her French accent made her Italian difficult to understand. So for most of her early roles in Italian television, she was dubbed. What this means is that, as we saw Claudia's lips move on the screens, someone's voice recording was played in the background. Everybody adored her talent, but nobody wanted to give her voice a chance. Nobody until Federico Fellini. And for her next role, Claudia would convince everyone who ever doubted her. She was featured in the 1965 Bebo's Girl, and she used her own voice. For her performance in the movie, she received her first Nastro d'Argento for best role. Moving forward, Claudia would be faced with much greater problems than her voice. The hungry directors in the industry were going to come for her, and nothing could have ever prepared her for that. With no previous affiliations in the industry, Claudia ushered herself into the acting business, and the amount of trouble that came for her made her contemplate killing herself. When she won the beauty contest, that changed it all. While many directors saw talents, a lot of others saw a young, naive girl who was very vulnerable and at the very first attempt, Cardinal would fall right into their snare. After the pageant, Claudia got in touch with Italian director Franco Cristaldi, and she bought his lies about making her a big star. Well, he did make her a big star, but he made sure she paid him back every penny he invested in her. Claudia at this time was pregnant, but not for Cristaldi. According to popular sources, her pregnancy was from a terrible relationship with a Frenchman who was 10 years her senior. So to make things better for herself and her unborn child, Cardinal signed a contract with Franco Cristaldi. Somewhere in between, the duo started a fast romance, and by 1966, he tricked her down the aisle. Claudia confessed that the years that followed were the worst of her career. She worked so hard while all of her money was going into Cristaldi's pocket. She had originally planned to abort the pregnancy, but for some reason she decided to go through with it. Franco did her work with the pregnancy until she couldn't hide her baby bump anymore. Frustrated by her hectic schedule and the constant pressure from Cristaldi to keep her baby a secret, Claudia fell into depression, and as she confessed, she contemplated killing herself many times. Frankie brought her so much hard luck, and she thought that breaking up with him would make her problems go away. Well, they did, but Frankie was prepared to fight back. She terminated her contract with the director, and he sent her to London for the birth of her child. But Claudia would fall for Franco's charms for the second time. With the old contract over, Cristaldi came up with a new agreement that placed him on top of every aspect of Claudia's life, restricting even her right to act on her own behalf. I was no longer master of my own body or thought, Claudia said. Franco controlled everything about her for seven years until she confessed to journalist Enzo Biaggi, and he published her story in the popular magazines. This managed to end her toxic relationship with Franco. Being a sex symbol also came with its struggles, as Claudia revealed that many of her co-stars tried to get her in bed with them. They did all they could to seduce her, but as Claudia reported, she has always been smarter. On the identity of her son, the actress later revealed publicly that she was raped, and so could not say exactly who her boy's father was. With all she passed through in the industry, Claudia refuses to believe that she was exploited in any way. No, no, I always refuse to be treated like this, she said. I never accepted to be naked in my films, for example. 
Though Hollywood welcomed her with open arms, the first few months were enough to convince her that this was not the place for her. In 1964, Claudia traveled to the United States, where she featured in a string of Hollywood films. She was a beneficiary of an American initiative where successful European actresses were invited to the States to perform in their movies. But most of the time, this didn't end well. The actresses involved were forced into contracts that might not be profitable. Still, they had no option but to continue. Claudia was on top of her game. I took care of my own interests, blankly refusing to sign an exclusive contract with Universal Studios, she said. I only signed for individual films. In the end, everything worked out for me. Her first feature film in Hollywood was in the 1964 American drama film Circus World. But by the end of that decade, Claudia escaped from that industry. I don't like the star system, she said. I like to live in Europe. I mean, I've been to Hollywood many, many times, but I didn't want to sign a contract. Although she found significant success in Hollywood, Claudia has confessed that she didn't want to end up over-glamorized and exploited like Sophia Loren. She just didn't care what had to go. The money, the fame, according to her, all of it could go as long as she was not forced to do anything. A lot of people always wondered how Claudia managed to survive the burdens that came with being such a high-demand actress and sex symbol. As she revealed in an interview, the first thing about it was mindset. She got through most of it because she was not in it for the glamour. When I was young, my dream was to explore the world. And I did it. Acting was just the passport, she said. Claudia's first marriage was with Italian director Franco Cristaldi. She still argues that she never did tie the knot with the director, that they just had marriage celebrations, but many sources have proved this to be a lie. Though Cardinale might not like to admit it, without Franco in her story, there's a good chance she might not have made it this big. The couple maintained a love-hate relationship throughout the seven years they were together. He was her mentor, manager, and husband. But after Claudia exposed the secret sufferings of her marriage to the public, Franco had to let her go. Still, he was going to keep manipulating her even from a distance. When Claudia found love again in the arms of another Italian director, Franco was going to do all he could to frustrate the couple. With Cardinale and Pasquale's Quittieri, their love was one to die for. Maybe that was why it turned out to be Claudia's longest romance. They were together for 42 years until Squitieri died in 2017. But with the way it started, nobody would believe that they would make it this far. Pasquale had a reputation in the industry as a reckless womanizer, but Claudia was going to be the one to make the first move. We don't know if this was out of desperation to leave Franco or if she was really attracted to him at first. Whichever one it was, Franco was going to fight them. Cristaldi was a very important producer and nobody wanted to go against him. Nobody wanted to oppose him, Claudia shared. With his influence in the Italian film industry, Cristaldi tried to stop them, but he failed. Cardinale's success was going to make it very difficult for him. In the end, love prevailed. Claudia stuck with Pasquale until he breathed his last. Although there were rumors of Claudia sharing romantic connections with a few men in the industry, including Steve McQueen, Belmondo Mastrioni, and Delon, none was ever proven. In all her romantic flings, Claudia has just one regret. She rejected Marlon Bardo. Claudia in an interview expressed deep regrets on why she turned Marlon down the night he came asking for her hand in marriage. These days, it's easy to believe that the actress has given up on love, but until she says something about it, it remains what it is. Claudia, speaking on her love life in a recent interview, said that she has just one important man in her life, and it was the Neapolitan director Pasquale Squitieri. The couple share a child, their daughter, Claudia. It's hard to believe at first, but Claudia herself has revealed that she was once a tomboy. As a teenager, Claudia was always ready to fight with anyone to at least demonstrate that women were as strong as men. She also recounted times when she would jump on the bandwagon to go to school in Carthage. And when the drivers would report her to her father, she was always ready to defend herself. This trait translated into Claudia's passion for gender equality in society. She has been a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for the Defense of Women's Rights since March 2000. At the peak of her fame, Claudia was nicknamed the Italian answer to Bridget Bardot. People always found ways to draw comparisons between the two actresses, but Cardinale hated to compete. According to her, Bardot had always been the better actress, and she looked up to her. I'm a fan of Bridget Bardot. Who could not be? When I was young, she was my idol. 
I loved her elegance and her natural power, Claudia confessed. Cardinal got together with her idol for the French Western comedy The Legend of Frenchy King. The movie tanked at the box office, but it was famous for a scene where the two sex symbols were in a hammy catfight. Although she has always been advertised as a sex symbol, Claudia never got the point. She insists that she never made sexy things in her film. She has also successfully kept herself away from smoking and drinking, and as much as she could she avoids unnecessary romances with the industry's men. Her only crime was that she was found attractive at a time when women like her were objects of sexual satisfaction. What has she been up to? Claudia has devoted her entire life to acting business while sacrificing her happiness and her original intent to become a teacher. These days, she has not been doing so much other than what we know her for, and she has continued to record a few successes and failures. One of Claudia's worst movie features was the 1993 comedy film Son of Pink Panther. It was the ninth and final installment of the original Pink Panther series and it was a box office failure. It was described by critics as a painfully unfunny script. Cardinal had only agreed to make the movie as a means to reunite with Blake Edwards, Herbert Lom and Burt Kwok to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Pink Panther series. As of July 2015, the film has a rating of just 6% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 34 reviews. With over six decades of active participation in the acting industry, Claudia said that her favorite thing about being an actress was that she could be whoever she wanted. I was a blonde, I was a brunette, I was a princess, I was a whore, I was everything. You're not yourself in front of the camera. You can live many lives instead of one. I think I've been lucky. Claudia Cardinale. The actress resents the idea of retirement. According to her, she has not seen any reason to stop. Acting is who she is and she's ready to keep at it until she can't anymore. There are rumors that the actress is currently hospitalized in a retirement home in France, but several magazines have kicked against this, arguing that the actress is enjoying her time away in a hidden location. Her last appearance on the screens was in the 2020 Netflix film Rogue City. Fans of Claudia Cardinale still expect their legend to make a comeback soon, and until then we wait in good faith. Claudia Cardinale, now 85 years old, has established herself as an industry wonder, and her contributions to cinema continue to be celebrated, making her a symbol of elegance and skill in the world of film. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other videos of beautiful actresses from the yesteryears.